After ingesting a magical substance, a cat and a group of rodents become super geniuses and travel around deceiving humans in exchange for money, but they didn't count on the biggest challenge of all, the evil Rat King. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, The Amazing Maurice, from 2022. A cat called Maurice hunts mice on a farm where there is an infestation of the animals, finding several in the well and even under people's hats. At the same time, a young man is shocked to realize that the feline can talk like a human. The local residents need help to get rid of the rats. A flutist called Keith appears, playing his instrument and hypnotizing all the rodents, who form a cue as they follow him. The musician directs the animals to the edge of a river, and they throw themselves into the water without any resistance. In the village, the villagers realize that the talking cat has disappeared, as has the piper. Far from the village, Keith finds the rats and gives them some belongings. In addition, Maurice appears and shows off the bag of money stolen from the people deceived by the group. A rodent called Dangerous Bean believes that they shouldn't fool humans, even if people fool everyone. However, they need money to find Paradise Island, known as the Land of Dreams, where animals can speak and live in complete harmony with humans. Maurice claims that the island is far out at sea and they need money to buy a boat that can travel there. In the next town to be invaded, the mayor hires rat hunters to exterminate the animals. However, the food in the town is disappearing, starving the people and the man believes it may have something to do with the disappearance of the rodents. After that, the head of the bandits enters the office, a bizarre fellow who wears a cape, completely hiding his face and identity. In the city's sewers, the group of trickster rats run through the pipes in order to invade the houses. Darkton, the gang leader, is worried because he has found traps on the site, tracks and rodent scat, but there are no animals around. When Keith and his cat Maurice arrive in town, they come across advertisements about rewards for each mouse hunted. They can't find any food on the streets and there is only one store open. The piper tries to buy the last food available, but the fruit mysteriously disappears before he can pay for it. At the same time, Maurice breaks into a room and his colleague goes after him, but the animal ends up knocking over several objects, causing a lot of noise. Suddenly, the cat realizes that there is a girl watching them, so he asks the young man to stroke him in order to pretend to be some pet receiving affection from his guardian. Even so, the girl realizes that she is in front of a talking feline, so the animal accidentally lets out a few words. Melicia is the daughter of the town's mayor and offers what little food she has to visitors. While Keith reveals that he is an orphan, the young woman pours some spoiled milk into the animal's bowl. At the same moment, Sardines emerges from the pipes, about to invade the kitchen, but the girl realizes his presence and grabs a pan to attack him. On the other hand, Keith is willing to protect his companion. Melicia decides to end her attack because she believes the mouse is a magical animal, but she doesn't understand why a rodent is friends with a feline. The girl discovers the whole scheme of the group, that they cheat the people of the towns they visit in order to get money. However, the big question is, how did those animals learn to talk? In the past, the group lived in the garbage dump and fed on whatever food they could find, including a bubbling green liquid that came out of magical cauldrons. After a few days, the animals discovered that the substance was being dumped by the invisible university. They became intelligent, learned to read and their names were created from the things they found in the garbage, such as peaches and sardines. Melicia believes they can solve the town's mystery, as all the food in the town has disappeared, as have the rats. At the same moment, the girl prepares for her new mission by putting on a leather outfit. In the hunter's hideout, the boss feasts while delegating a task to his subordinates, catching the new rodents in town. In the manholes of the city, the group of animals find a mousetrap with a juicy cheese, then dark tan. The leader realizes that it is a different device from the ones they usually find. So he asks his partners to bring Mr. Tic Tac, a little mouse on a string. The toy approaches, but turns around, so the boss pulls it by the tail, but uses so much force that it ends up slipping out of his hands. This causes Tan to be thrown into the trap, which releases a cage, trapping him. Further along the pipes, the group finds dozens of those mousetraps with cheese on top. In the city, Melicia walks stealthily through the streets, trying to be discreet, and ends up attracting even more attention. She finds the hunter's hideout and uses hairpins to open the door. Maurice doubts the girl's ability to pick the lock, then is surprised when the door opens easily. Melicia is disappointed when she finds a normal room full of trinkets instead of something terrible. She believes there is a secret passage in the room, so everyone searches, but finds nothing. However, there is a mouse passage, where the girl finds a lever, which opens a trap door, causing Keith to fall straight into the compartment because he was on top of the passage. Just below, the group finds a door leading to a room full of food. While he's eating a piece of meat, Maurice notices a bug invading the place and hides, so he runs and catches the rodent, realizing that it's his friend Peaches. 
The little mouse is startled by the teenager, but soon discovers that she already knows the group's secret. She then says that there's a problem with the rest of the team, at which point Mr. Tick Tack enters the room. Right behind him, the rest of the animals arrive carrying Darkton trapped in his cage. However, Melicia manages to open the cage, so the leader attacks the mouse, but the girl protects him by keeping him in her bag. The hunters suddenly appear and the girl accuses them of stealing food to feed the rodents they are catching and keeping hidden somewhere. The short man throws his gun, knocking down several animals. At that moment, the young man steps into a trap, but Maurice strikes the two men with a blow to the face. The cat jumps, while his friends struggle to escape and end up being captured. Afterwards, each animal is locked in a cage, yet Darkton tries to reach a key from inside but can't. Suddenly, they realize that Maurice is there, and he helps them to free themselves. Even so, they need to find sardines and the teenagers to escape the city. The only clue to their whereabouts is that the hunters told them about a rat race. The animals are confused because they've never heard of it, so the cat tells them that there was never a mouse left alive to tell the story. In the storeroom, the two youngsters try to escape from their restraints, then the girl realizes that Dangerous Bean and Peaches have arrived and are gnawing on the ropes. Melicia says that the escape was as easy as in the book Paradise Island, a fairy tale that doesn't happen in real life. Upon hearing these words, the little mouse ends up getting hurt, since she believed everything to be true, so she runs away from the place in tears. Bean goes after her through the pipes and realizes that there is no one else there. As she emerges from the darkness, Peaches doesn't realize that there are several hands behind her, capturing her. At the same time, the two hunters are devouring a meal and don't realize that Maurice and his friends have invaded the place. The girl reveals to the guys that she has put poison in the food, which makes them nervous. The guy explained that they usually capture rodents to participate in fights, and accidentally created the King of the Rats, a group of animals that have merged their minds and have great strength. Suddenly, Maurice leaves the place claiming that he is going to warn the rest of the group. The girl reveals that she left the poison antidote at the bottom of the building, causing the bandits to go downstairs immediately. In fact, the men had only ingested something that causes stomach pain, and the antidote was also the same substance. After that, the two teenagers head into the gloomy woods, where they must find a magic piper to control the Rat King. At that moment, Maurice watches in hiding as the youngsters enter the woods, because he is running away from the danger they all have to face. Even so, the feline feels guilty for not helping his companions. The group of friends follow Sardine's scent, arriving at an isolated place where some men are releasing rodents onto a battlefield and then putting a rabid dog inside. When the animal is released, it swiftly destroys all the little ones in front of it. Soon afterwards, the man announces a different kind of fighter, the rat in the hat, and everyone realizes that this is his dancing partner, who is getting ready to perform. The humans put a seemingly harmless dog inside, but it starts barking angrily. Dark Tom then asks his companions to tie a rope around his waist. In the combat arena, the dog is released and lunges at the dancing rat, who manages to dodge it by luck, causing the animal to hit its head on the wall. Suddenly, the rodent starts dancing, catching the enemy's attention. When he finishes his performance, the leader of the group throws himself off the cliff and realizes that the rope is not tied around his waist, causing him to fall to the ground. Darkton gets in front of the animal and the other rats manage to remove sardines from the combat area. The boss attacks the dog, which tries to eat him at any cost. He then manages to mount his enemy, who throws him up in the air and tries to devour him, and then throws the little guy against the wall. However, the leader stands up wielding two sharp nails. He throws his weapons at his opponent, who is very frightened. Even so, the dog lunges at him again, but the rat dodges, sending his enemy crashing into the wall. Dark Tan manages to get out of the combat zone and dodges the humans who try to kick him. He manages to escape, but another dog comes out of the depths, about to attack him, and his friends throw an object at the enemy's head, causing him to black out. In the dark forest, the two teenagers reach a cliff, and Melicia throws a rope across the gap, then holds on tight, and grabs the young man, jumping over the precipice. The girl believes that her life is a story, because if she doesn't think that way, she will become part of someone else's story, and she tries to convince her partner to think the same. Suddenly, they hear the sound of a flute and come across a house in the middle of the forest. A bird flies in and lands on the window of the house, then someone catches it. Afterwards, a strange man comes out of the house holding a bird ready to go into the oven. While the guy prepares the food, the two teenagers hide behind a tree, unaware that the piper is getting closer and closer. The man begins to play his instrument and a bird appears bringing an apple to add to his lunch. At the same time, Dangerous Beans is looking for peaches in the sewer pipes. A voice calls his name and directs him to a dark room filled with books. Inside, he meets the head of the hunters, who claims to know him. 
The weird guy wants the rodent to join him. Suddenly, some rats start appearing in the room and invade the robes of the boss, who increases in size. Dangerous Beans asks where his friend is, then the enemy pulls peaches out of his coat. The rat tries to wind up his opponent by telling him stories, so that he doesn't realize that Maurice is right behind him. At the same moment, the man receives a blow to the face, but this only makes him angrier, causing his eyes to glow with anger. The cat then throws his money bag at the guy's head, almost causing him to fall over. The enemy recovers and the three friends take the opportunity to try to escape through the rat hole, but the feline is too big to get through the passage, so it jumps through the glass window, causing everyone to fall into the street. Down below, the rest of the group emerges and makes their way into the sewer. In the gloomy forest, the two teenagers sneak into the piper's house. While the guy is asleep, Keith reaches for his instrument and slowly seizes it. However, the guy wakes up and hits the young man when he turns his back and drops his guard. The young man faints and when he wakes up he realizes that his friend is facing the madman, who begins to play his magic flute, enchanting the young people and making them walk outside the residence against their will. The couple begin to move strangely to the man's music, because there is an animal inside his clothes that is bothering him. Then he drops his instrument and the girl takes the opportunity to attack him with a kick, causing him to be thrown into the oven. His clothes catch fire and he runs desperately, jumping into a well. During the confusion, Mr. Tic Tac emerges from inside the man's robes, revealing that he is responsible for the attack. The rest of the group flees through the city's pipes, but some of the animals begin to despair with fear. During the ruckus, Maurice admits that a long time ago he had to swallow a mouse, which turned him into a talking cat. This perplexes his friends, as he shows no remorse. At the same time, they find a way out of the manhole and run out of town. After crossing a bridge, the group encounters the boss, who is waiting for them at the end of the road. The rodents ask to see the true face of the enemy, who gives a command and thousands of animals begin to appear and enter his body, revealing his identity as the Rat King. The monster releases some kind of spell that makes the members of Maurice's group approach against their will. Even so, the feline decides to flee the scene in order to ask for help. Along the way, in the forest, he bumps into the two teenagers who are carrying the magic flute to hypnotize his opponent. However, the Rat King is bewitching more and more animals to join his body. Darkton decides to throw a rock at the enemy, but loses his strength and is dragged into the pile of rodents. The creature is about to capture dangerous beans, but Melicia appears and tries to distract him. Soon after, Keith starts playing the magic flute. Even so, the young man's friends continue to be captured one by one, while he gets closer and closer to his adversary, who catches him and throws him away. The girl faces the monster and receives a powerful blow, causing her body to be thrown into the forest. The young man believes that his music isn't working, so Melicia encourages him, saying that it's not the music that does the magic, but he himself. At the same time, Dangerous Beans refuses to obey the Rat King, so the creature captures him and threatens to take his life. However, the music comes on again, causing parts of the creature's body to fall apart, freeing the animals that have been hypnotized. Gradually the monster is destroyed, releasing thousands of rodents, leaving only eight bewitched animals that were united by their tails into a single organism. Suddenly, the enemy releases a spell that causes an explosion, demanding that Dangerous Beans join him, but the mouse denies his request. Then the opponent strikes a magical blow, causing the little guy to be seriously injured. Maurice decides to act and jumps at the boss, who throws another power at him, causing the animal to move away. However, the feline manages to get close and strikes each of the animals until he reaches the junction of their tails. It swallows the center, causing the enemy to fall apart. Then the group of friends appears and Maurice approaches carrying beans, even though he is almost lifeless. Later, in his imagination, the cat realizes that Lady Death has come for him and his companion, but the feline claims that he still has six lives left. So he asks to donate one of his lives to the rodent, and the lady decides to grant his request. When he realizes that everyone is fine, he kisses Melicia, who is startled but returns the kiss. After a few days in the city, hunger no longer exists and Keith has become the town's Pied Piper, putting on shows with his fellow rats, who live in harmony with the humans. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.